G'day, welcome to the channel, it's James here. Today we're just checking out the demo project that I've been working on for a little while. I've done some um, experiments, I guess you could say, some minor changes, and I've added a switch input just there. So that is a 240 volt switch input um, that takes a push button like so. I've got one set up here to try it out. And turns the light on and off, as you can see. Like so. You can also hold it to dim it up and down as well. And it inputs the mains voltage in through those current limiting resistors. And there's about 48 volts drop over each one. So that's fully within their limits. And it comes up here to the opto isolator, which is an AC type one. And then that goes into a little circuit there with a, a LC RC filter, I should say, RC filter to smooth out the ripples. And then it comes into GPIO 12. Now I couldn't get GPIO 12 to work I think that it's tied to ground and so I couldn't get it to go high and the pull-ups wouldn't work. I couldn't find anything about it, whether it, it would work or not. And I thought maybe it's faulty, so I tried another module and it didn't work either. So what I did is I just switched over to 14 and 14 works. So that was right next door. So I just put a little solder jumper on, on it and that worked fine, perfectly. And I got that up and running with the, um, with the button just there, like so. So that was handy. So that's what I've been working on at the moment tonight, just um, messing around with it, having a bit of fun. Now, it's got the uh, DAC just there in the center, and that's now running on five volts. And that gets its power supply from the little switch mode power supply there, which steps the 12 volts down to five volts. And then there's a LDO for the ESP module. And there's the logic level shifter to go from 3.3 .3 to 5 volts for the I squared C bus. So that's this dimmer here, which I'm sure that you've probably seen before if you're watching this video. And what th this is here is a just a, another ESP um, module. And I've got a sketch loaded on that, which is to control, which con controls this or is controlled by this encoder over here. And that sends out an I squared C signal to the DAC over here. So if we rotate the encoder over here, we will get the dimmer turning on and off, like so. just by um, rotating this encoder back and forward. Now the purpose behind that or the thinking is, well, it's it's the encoder that I, I took out of this Voltex dimmer here. And what I'm toying with the idea of using an STM32 microcontroller, and if I can fit it inside this area of circuit board, then this can be packed back into the dimmer and the STM32 can receive the signals from the encoder and also from the push button that the encoder has built into it. And it can use CAN bus to send out a CAN bus signal to the dim my dimmer board over here. So if this gets an upgrade that receives a CAN bus controller and or transceiver, then you could theoretically, I guess, get a whole heap of these because they clip into a standard wall plate like so, like these. So you could put six of these in one plate connected to a CAN bus control network or just to a CAN bus network and then you could have these all located in a, in a switch board and you could have a number of dimmers and it's all controlled on the, on the CAN bus and I mean you can have, well we can have up to 60 or 120 um, addresses on a CAN bus network. So that is the thinking behind what's going on here that I'm, I'm just trying out just to see if it's a good idea or not. I, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, um, but I'm, I'm experimenting and I'm having a bit of fun here tonight just trying it out. 
and it looks like it would um, be worth giving it a go. Now, some of the benefits, I guess, that come from that is that it's got the nice feel of a tactile dimmer. A lot of people are put in new smart dimmers and they don't like the push buttons that they have. I don't know of many, if any, smart dimmers that have a knob like this one that you can just rotate. I think most of them are push button and a lot of people like the feel of a push button, including myself. I think it, I prefer it if it's possible. Now, on top of that, what it, how it could work is that the CAN bus runs on, on low, extra low voltage. So you could have an isolator here to isolate the extra low voltage from the main potential side. But you could also lose this power supply just here. And you would, wouldn't need the Wi-Fi module anymore either. So that would become quite a bit smaller. And you would still need a power supply, but you could get it from the CAN bus network or from one power supply that powers the CAN bus network and have a small DC-DC isolator. Now they are like a heap smaller than this. They're like an eighth of the size of this one here. So you could probably do some better configuration and, or layout if you've lost heaps of stuff. Um, you would only need five volts here and you wouldn't need the 3.3 volts and you wouldn't need the uh, you wouldn't need to have this little circuitry here for the to step down from 12 to... Oh, gee, you might need that still. No, you wouldn't need that. You could use an LDO instead because the only current you've got is just to run the DAC, which is hardly anything at all. So you could use an LDO for that to step down from 12 to five, um, five volts. Anyway, I'm thinking that it's a possible a good idea. I don't know yet until I try it. And you could also send other data on the network as well, like... Uh, power data so you could have modules uh, that have the power use the power consumption as well uh, there's obviously a lot of things you could do with it i think and also you could another theory i have is if you had these in one central location from an installation point of view you could just have a rotary thing that you turn so you give it a an address just by turning it so there's no programming to do so you rotate it to address 16 and then you put on the here you rotate that to 16 and then you just put it in and like there's absolutely nothing to set up other than that and then on top of that you can connect it into your home automation system or whatever so there's some of the things i'm thinking are potential benefits and that's why I want to try it out because I want to give it a go. And I like experimenting. Anyway, that is the project I'm working on tonight. I hope you found it interesting. I'm sure if you've watched this far, you must find it slightly interesting. And if you do, could you give us a thumbs up? And if you want to see more videos on home automation, please, and electrical installations, please subscribe um, for more. Um, so you, you can catch up on the latest. Now, one thing I will add is that this, the plans for this are, well, two things I will add is that the plans are available on Easy EDA. I've updated them to this version just here. If you do want to try this out, I encourage you to only do so if you're qualified and know exactly what you're doing because this is mains voltage, this dimmer here. So that is the um, a warning that you should just take this video as interesting if you're not qualified or um, it's not something you've, you're experienced with because it is hazardous. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you on, on my next video. Um, see you next time. Bye.